Felicitous greetings, fellow fanatics. Welcome back, one and all. I'm Adam the Fanatic, and today we're taking a look at Heroes of Drake Meyer, a retro-inspired JRPG by Clockwatchers Incorporated. While the game is unreleased and still undergoing bug testing, I have been given a key to unlock a feature-complete version of the game. In the meantime, you can try out the demo which is available on Steam. Without any further ado, let's dive in! In Drakemire, you'll take on the role of Brutus, an unofficial knight who has been thrown into a quest of epic proportions. While gathering mushrooms for his grandfather one day, Brutus soon finds that numerous monsters now roam the lands. And that's not even the strangest thing that happens. While exploring, he also comes across an amnesic wizard named Endal. With the aid of the archer Sophronia, they decide to head north in hopes of finding someone that can restore Endolf's memory. There are two primary types of areas in Drakemire. In towns, you'll be able to peacefully talk to characters, take on side quests, stock up on items, learn new abilities, and upgrade existing ones. Most towns will also have a teleporter to quickly take you between towns that you've already visited, a crystal to save your progress, and a spot to heal and refresh your magic. And if you should ever fall in battle, you'll automatically teleport to the nearest restoration spot and be rejuvenated. The other type of map you'll encounter are, of course, battlefields. These will have items you can pick up to use in upgrading your characters. Treasure chests will only work the first time you come across them, but if you should pick up all minor collectibles on a map, then those will be refilled after leaving and re-entering the map. As for battles themselves, you enter them in traditional randomized fashion. Every space you travel has a chance of activating a random battle. Battles are very straightforward. Characters start with two basic attacks, but can learn more through trainers. Sometimes, attacks will mention targeting the body or head of the foe. Flying foes will automatically dodge any attack that targets the body, and that really seems to be the only difference between the two. That aside, some attacks will trade raw damage for doing multiple hits or hitting multiple targets. And some attacks do have a chance to critical, which obviously will greatly increase your damage if successful. Each character also has the option to do certain magic attacks. Most of these are just more powerful versions of standard attacks that cost 50 MP each, although Endolf has a hit-all attack that costs 100. The only character that's really noteworthy beyond that is Celestria, the healer of the group. In addition to the obvious of being able to restore HP, she can also sacrifice MP to give a portion of it to another hero. Presentation-wise, I feel the game is rather mixed. The music isn't bad, but the art direction feels kind of unfocused. The characters and monsters have this very cartoony look, whereas the maps and backgrounds have far more detail put into them. The animations aren't bad, but character expressions certainly feel... odd. Most of the player characters seem permanently angry, which looks fine in battle, but then when you get into a town, all the townsfolk have this strange, frightened expression. When you combine the two, it makes it look like you're about to extort money from anyone you might come across. And now we come to the part of the review where we'll be discussing the plot. If you wish to avoid spoilers, please jump ahead to the time coordinates indicated on screen. Initiate temporal distortion... now. Still with me? Then don't say I didn't warn you. Before long, Brutus and Endolf arrive at Ravenmire. Unfortunately, the apothecary there doesn't know of a way to restore memories, so she directs them to Lunabride, where they meet with the aforementioned Celestria. The healer agrees to help formulate a potion to cure his amnesia, and a fair bit of the early game is dedicated to this. The potion doesn't completely restore his memories, but it does bring back knowledge of stronger magics. And with them, Celestria suggests that using his power may jog his memories to help him remember more. To this point in purpose, Endolf suggests that they hunt down the dragon that's terrorizing the distant city of Rosevale. But of course, facing down a dragon is no easy task. Heading towards Night Vale, Celestria's friend Amerlina joins up with the group. Once they arrive, Brutus sees a statue of the hero for which he's named, and the groundskeeper of the monument promises to teach them how to withstand the dragon's aura of fear if they can find the pieces of Brutus' armor to decorate the statue. And the breastplate is with none other than Brutus' grandfather. Yes, it turns out Brutus isn't merely named for the previous dragon slayer, but is in fact his son. After that revelation, he gathers the various parts of the armor and comes to the conclusion that the groundskeeper, in turn, is likely his mother, but he's not yet ready to confront her on the matter. She teaches them how to defend against the dragon's aura, as promised, and they set off south towards Rosevale. There, the group confronts the dragon, but the troubles don't end there. The dragon was guarding a portal that's allowing more and more monsters to pour into the land. While the others are bickering about what to do, Amarlina sneaks in and sacrifices herself to close the portal. The heroes are naturally quite distraught about this. All of them except Endolf. After gaining more of his memories back, Endolf suggests raising Amerlina from the dead, to which Celestria rightly objects. 
Brutus and his simple-mindedness goes along with this, and honestly, this is where I stopped. The game certainly doesn't stop here, but I'd seen enough by this point to formulate my opinion on it. Welcome back, Chronauts. You're just in time to join us for the conclusion. All in all, Heroes of Drakemire is... lacking. There are two key things that you can build an RPG on, the battle system or the story. And the fact of the matter is that, while I only played about halfway through, I felt that Drake Meyer didn't excel in either area. The plot never really had much going for it. A story can get away with a basic plotline if the characters are well developed and play off of each other nicely, but I never felt that here. And then you have the battles, and this has to be one of the most bare bones battle systems I have ever seen in any RPG that I've played. I'm fine with keeping things simple and wanting to pay homage to retro games. I've given positive reviews to both retro titles and those that imitate them, but this felt like nothing but a grind fest. There are no interesting decisions to make in battle whatsoever. There is practically zero variety between movesets. Yes, characters and their attacks are visually distinct, but mechanically, they all felt interchangeable besides Celestria. Even in the original Final Fantasy, yes, I know this is footage from 5, I don't have footage of the original, each class played very distinctly from one another, while the different spells the mages could cast all had different uses. And that was while having to work with the technical limitations of the NES. I want to like Drakemire. I do see some passion here, and on a technical level, the game does seem to run just fine. But in order for a JRPG to be memorable, it must either have a battle system that keeps me wanting to fight, especially when the game is as grindy as this one, or a story that keeps me invested in the characters and their world. I played through about half of the game over the course of 11 hours, and in that time, I feel that it was woefully short of the mark. It's far from the worst game that I've ever played, but it does feel very forgettable. As such, I feel I have to give Heroes of Drakemire a lacking 6.2 out of 10. Heroes of Drakemire is yet to release, but there is a playable demo on Steam. If you're interested in trying it yourself or learning more, links are included in the description. But what about you? What do you think of Heroes of Drakemire? What JRPGs would you recommend? If you have any questions, remarks, or posing points of view, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. And if you really enjoy my work, please consider funding my channel on Patreon. Until next time, farewell. Fellow fanatics. Thank you again for watching. I have plenty more to share with you if you're interested. You can click up here above my head to subscribe to my channel. You can click over here on my monitor to see the most recent video that I've worked on. Or if you prefer, you can click up here to open this mysterious vault and see what video that the YouTube algorithm has picked just for you.